Arguably, the biggest way a PhD changes your life is by shifting your expectations on what you should or should not be doing. It changes what success looks like and how you feel about yourself based on what you decide to do next. For example, when you finish a PhD, I certainly felt now I owed it to myself to become an academic, even though deep down inside, I really knew that's not what I wanted. I actually, as soon as I left my PhD, I went to work for an explosives company. And then after about 13 months, I moved back into academia because I swear there was something deep down inside me that was like, oh no, you, you're a failure if you don't go back into academia, at least give it a go. Even though I feel like I would have been happy in another job, there was always a pull back to academia that uh, I felt strongly. I feel like people that get PhDs are typically the sort that uh, aim for high things. They've got high expectations on themselves. And so when you sort of finish a PhD, that's further evidence that that's what success looks like. It's kind of like extra confirmation bias that you need to work harder and uh, try to make it not only to the top of education, but now top of academia. And uh, that can be a really hard thing to shake. Even today, I sometimes look at people in my past who have sort of been successful in academia, and I feel a tiny bit of jealousy, and it kind of bubbles up, and I have to squash it and be like, no, I don't actually want that life. But it kind of feels like that I failed in some way still to this day, many years after my PhD. But there's no doubt that doing a PhD delayed that exploration of different jobs because I should be an academic and I owe it to myself to give it a good hard uh, go. Otherwise, uh, it's been a waste of education and a waste of a PhD. Not the case, clearly not the case but it's what I think a PhD does to you deep down inside. Once you get past that kind of feeling of failure and that you should be doing something else, there's no doubt that after you've worked through those issues, that a PhD still helps you out years down the line. There's no doubt that my PhD is paying dividends, it's just in ways I didn't actually expect. So this YouTube channel wouldn't be possible without my PhD, for example. I wouldn't have been able to do my startup and been as successful at gaining grant money if I didn't have a PhD. Um, just the way it kind of trains your brain as well into being more analytical, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but essentially the, the PhD does rewrite your life and your future because it does have value, I think, for nearly everyone. It's just not obvious right away. And it isn't like a linear kind of like, I did a PhD, therefore this is the benefit. It's much more turbulent and twisted than that. But uh, yeah, it has rewritten my life for the better. And sometimes in the early stages after getting a PhD, it doesn't feel like that. But after you've sort of like sorted out the, uh, the, the issues and been through the weeds of how you feel, the value's there. So if you've just got a PhD and you feel lost, keep searching because it does actually get a lot better. And I've seen it through the eyes and the experience of many, many of my friends. So keep going, the value is in there. And you know, a PhD for me has been incredibly worth it. So keep going, look for the value and uh, there'll be something there, just maybe in a place you didn't expect. There is no doubt that having a PhD has increased my credibility. I found this particularly true when I did a startup tour, a tour in the States. People want to be lazy when they first meet you. They don't want to have to work out this complicated being of likes, dislikes, and, and uh, you know all of the intricacies that make you you. What they do want to do is just put you in a box. And so by saying, hi, I'm Dr. Stapleton, they just go, oh. There's the box I can put you in. Perfect. Thanks for making this easy for me. People make snap judgments all the time because it's just easier. And by having a PhD, I think it has increased my credibility. There's no doubt that uh, having a PhD related to the startup I used to run increased uh, the likelihood that I was going to get funding. And I did get funding and I got customers and clients because of course my uh, PhD was related to um, my startup. You know, it was a science communication company. So uh, it does increase your credibility. It helps people put you in a box. And I think that 
process does make life a little bit easier in some professional circumstances. So having a PhD, there are some fringe benefits and that is only one. I had a high school teacher who was like, go as far as you can in education because it opens up doors. Thank you very much, Christopher Carey, or Mr. Carey, as uh, I called him back in the day. The thing is, there's some truth to this, and it did open up doors. So like I said earlier in the video, I left academia to go work as an explosives chemist, but then I came back to academia. If I didn't have a PhD and I went straight into the job as an explosives chemist, which you can do, I didn't need a PhD for that job, I'd find it incredibly difficult then to go back into academia. So I think it just gives you a few more options. And that is a double-edged sword because not only does it give you more options, which is great, but it also gives you more options, which can make it really difficult to decide what you want to do. If all the doors are open, you have to do the hard work and you have to go and start closing some of the doors. And that feels like you're burning bridges and you're not progressing. But in fact, you know, all of the doors being open sometimes can just make you paralyzed with fear and uh, too many choices. You do work your way through that, and with distance from your PhD, you get over that, but it certainly doesn't help. But it does help, because you've got more options. Ah! Another really important way that a PhD changed my life is by actually training my analytical mind. Now, I think I've always been the sort of person that has been drawn towards facts and figures and data for decision making, but it really sort of like focused me on that. I am very aware of when I am making decisions emotionally. And so I will go and search information. I will go and look for data and evidence to support one way or another. And that is a little trick in itself, right? because you can cherry pick the data to match what you're feeling. So you do learn some tricks and some hacks to actually kind of making sure that your decision making isn't completely driven by your emotions. And don't get me wrong, there are always some a little emotional sort of elements in a decision that has to be. We're human. Well, arguably, um, PhD is a human. And there's no doubt that as a PhD student, you're trained in making sure that your decisions are driven analytically. And so now I think I frustrate my partner a lot by being like, oh, okay, well, why do we think that? Or like, why is that the best option? It's not that I disagree, it's just that I need to make sure that we're making the best decision based on the data. And so that's infuriating if you're dating a PhD student or PhD graduate. Let me know in the comments if you're dating one and how frustrating it is. Academia is a global playing field. And so when I did my PhD, I grew up in the UK and I decided to do my PhD in Australia. And so one of the biggest ways this has rewritten my life is now I live in Australia, in Adelaide, in South Australia, and I love it. I love the weather, I love the lifestyle, I love the beaches, I love everything about my life in Australia. And I think my PhD opened up the door to Australia because it was an easy visa option. And I think a large part of me choosing to do a PhD in Australia was that, you know, they were easy uh, visas to get. And therefore, I ended up here, which is just so fantastic. So because academia is a global playing field, you do get to travel around if you want. And even it sort of like helped uh, sort of bubble up my love of traveling because I would go to conferences in different places. And so that sort of uh, travel aspect of a PhD is really valuable. And so it can rewrite your life because I met an Australian partner and now obviously I live in Adelaide with her. And it is something that uh, I think a lot of PhD students do find is that they travel to a country and then they kind of build a little life because that's that their beginning adult part of their life in another country and then they stay there. And so you can travel and it can be really difficult to move around after for postdocs and that sort of stuff because you have built up a little life. But I'm waffling. Ultimately, doing a PhD allowed me to live in Australia and I love that. I got my Australian passport recently. Brill or Bonza or good day. <laughs>
So there we have it. There are all of the ways that a PhD can rewrite your life. Let me know in the comments how it rewrote yours. What things have you noticed have changed? What has stayed the same? Where are the biggest impacts? I'd love to read your story as well. And also, you can get in contact with me in a couple other ways. The first way is to sign up to my newsletter. It's at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract, the perfect daily schedule, and more. It's exclusive content only available for free, so go sign up now. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my new project where I've got my two eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. I've got a blog there as well, my Insider Forum. It's all going off, go check it out. It'll be worth your time. It's all about making sure your PhD in academia works for you. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.